I think that uh, the subject spoken on by Brother Thompson were timely. I think if you tied them all together, they might lose considerable, a considerable amount of their proper impact. I could carry on some of the topics that he touched upon and illustrate a little bit, perhaps clarify somewhat. I don't feel inclined to do that. I will take a few minutes to say that perhaps outside of the time when Christ walked the earth, there has never been a time in the history of man that presented for each individual who had the privilege of being born in this day and age as many opportunities as you and I now possess. We have stepped out into a golden era. We have blessings that if we were to start to recount them even, while we take them for granted, would still astonish us. Things that were impossible to our grandparents are everyday accepted things to us. We were born in the day when the dispensation of the fullness of time was ushered in. We are not just at its early inception, but we are at the time when all of the fruits of the gospel are beginning to ripen, so that the fruits that are bitter and evil will very soon be cast out, and the fruits that are beautiful and ripened and usable and edible, God will use and store them up in eternal life. We have the opportunity to perfect our lives with more rules governing the blessings that we wish to receive known to us than any other people ever had. All of the blessings of all past dispensations have been gathered into this dispensation, and they are yours and mine. And there are blessings that have never been known to past dispensations that we are enjoying today. All of the gospel, with its attendant blessings, is so clearly enunciated and elucidated to our eyes and the ears and our thoughts that we have no reason whatsoever if we are reasonable men and women, to doubt. I know men who look back upon the history of the world, who read the life and works of Josephus, who study the historian's accounts of the past, who are quite familiar with the Bible, who when they study all of these things are looking for a loophole find out why and how, why they should receive it and how they can reject it. We have teachers in our higher universities who are trained to do all they can to undermine and destroy and darken the facts of history. We have students who are graduating from college who are being taught to question the very life and existence of the Lord Jesus Christ, let alone the atonement, the infinite atonement he made for the redemption of our souls. We are reaching a time in the history of Mormonism when we are beginning to die, doubt the lie, the validity, and the reason for the existence of the Prophet Joseph Smith. And we are sometimes taught in our universities to regard everything that we are taught as pertaining to the laws of the gospel and the necessity for their obedience 
as something a little short of ludicrous, and if we've got common sense, we will put them aside along with all other shady things and live a more practical life. Learn to do all the don'ts and not to believe any of the necessities for doing all the do. The brothers and sisters, our sun shines brightly in our sky today. The gospel message is before us to follow and to read its blessings and rewards. The day of this life will soon pass, and then we will be called to our reward. At a time and under circumstances where the same spirit that now possesses our bodies will possess us then, and guarantee to us the blessings we have worked for or the cursings we have earned. We will not change. But how glad we should be that all of these opportunities are ours, that we may take advantage of them now. Most of us were born of goodly parents. Most of us were reared either in the gospel or have the joy of having received it in our lifetime. Most of us at one time had a testimony of it and knew that it was true or we wouldn't have submitted to baptism and laying on of hands for the gift of the Holy Ghost. This Holy Spirit, if cultivated, can guide us into all truth and lay aside all doubt. And we are now in a position where we are working out our salvation and we ought to be doing it with all the earnestness of our soul. Work while it is today. And let tomorrow take care of itself. And if we do our work today, tomorrow will be bright and beautiful. I cannot urge my brothers and sisters too earnestly to study the scriptures, to remember your prayers, to draw as close to the Lord as you possibly can. And in this manner, God will draw close to you. He is not going to come out of his hiding place for you and me when we are doubting his existence. If we want to behold his face, we are going to have to seek it. And we have the promise that if we seek it with due diligence and earnestness and keep his commandments, we shall behold his face and know that he is. I have the glorious privilege, my brothers and sisters, of bearing you my solemn testimony that whether or not you can believe it, I know that God lives. I remember a doctor, I was attending a doctor's convention just a few weeks ago, and he made a very prolonged and he rude out discourse. It was sophisticated and over the heads of even the learned hearers. And after he had finished it, he wound up his whole remarks by saying, I hear people bear their testimonies about what they know about God and Jesus Christ. Brethren, or he didn't say brethren, he says, doctors and associates, we don't know anything. I thought, well, you speak for yourself, brother. You prove you don't know anything. But there's some things that I do know. I know that I speak to you. I know that I am. I know that there is purpose in my existence if I will make it purposeful. I know that I have a Heavenly Father who is my God, both body and spirit, and that I have a Redeemer who gave his life to make an atonement that I might live forever. I know that I have a wonderful family that I love with all my heart. I have brothers and sisters around me that I love with all my heart and that are engaged in God's work. And I know that we can come back into the presence of God if we live worthy of it. Now you might say, well, Brother Ruben, you just think you know these things. Well, I'd rather think I know them and not know them than not to think I knew them and not know anything about them. And if I'm wrong, 
I'm still ahead of the fellow that doesn't know that he knows anything. Because at least my life has had an aim and a purpose. And if Jesus didn't live, it has been a beautiful life to believe that he lived. If Jesus didn't offer an infinite atonement for me, my life has been so beautiful in this life, I've had a heaven while the other fellow who doesn't know that had his hell. If Joseph Smith was not a prophet of God, and I believed in him, Maybe I have acted foolish, but if he is a prophet of God and the fullness of the gospel is restored by him for me and for you, and we obey it, we're going to be in the sun all, all the days of this life and on our way to one exaltation after another throughout the eternities. Well, the fellow who didn't believe anything certainly is not going to be much ahead of it. I know that God lives. How do I know? How do I know that you live? I have seen your faces. I have gazed into your eyes. I have heard your voices. I have touched you. How do I know God lives? In that same manner. You cannot believe these things if you do not want to believe. But if you want to believe, that belief will ripen into knowledge. I invite you, brothers and sisters, to serve God and keep His commandments. And if you are wrong, you will at least have had this path of life to have a heaven on earth. God bless you. Amen.